Hello, my front end friends. Have you ever used details and summary to make something like this, but you wish it could be animated? Wait a second, it is. Uh, and there's no hacks or weird things going on here. It's just a few lines of modern CSS that are making this possible. Well, if you want to know how to do that, you're in the right place. So let's dive right into it. And so we're just going to be starting with some basic styling here on my details. And let's just go look really fast at the structure of this. Uh, you can see I have this question and answers div. Doesn't matter too much. The important thing is I have a details for each one of my questions. Uh, and then the summary, which is the part we can see right here. And then when I open it or close it, it's showing me the paragraph that's inside. You could put a div or other things in here. It doesn't have to be a paragraph. Uh, whatever content you want in there can work. Just know the summary is what's shown, and then that's what we can click to hide and show uh, what's actually in there. So with that in place, I'm gonna come in with some very quick CSS for general styling. This isn't about animating it, um, but it can just make your life a little bit easier because there are a few little gotchas along the way with styling these. Uh, so the first one is um, there is a way that we're gonna be selecting the the whole content area here sort of, and it can be tempting to put your padding or margins or whatever on that. I would say if you do want to adjust the spacing of things, the easiest thing, I'm doing a selecting all the children of my details because it depends how you set things up and saying margin zero, you might already be doing the star margin zero somewhere else, in which case you won't need that. Um, but then I'm adding the padding block, which is my top and bottom padding. I'm adding that back in on the paragraph. So if I remove that, you can see it's sort of stuck there a little bit, and then I can just add that extra spacing there to space things out. Um, we'll, we'll see what I'm talking about after, but just add margins or spacing on the elements that are in here. This is sort of important if you do need to space things out. Uh, I'm just doing some basic styling on my summary with the list style position by default is on inside. And if you do that, it's actually, you can't really see a big difference now other than like the margins and stuff. But if you have less space, it causes really ugly wrapping in my opinion, where we're going underneath the, the arrow, which I really don't like. So, and that's the default. So if you don't add a list style position, the default will be there where I can put this to be outside instead. And then it's gonna line it up that way, which I just think looks a little bit nicer. So there we go. Uh, so that's why I'm bothering with that one. My other things here are just some basic styling. And then I've changed the color of the arrow with my summary marker here. So I just made it a little bit smaller and I changed the color of it um, just so it's less white and in our faces. But let's get to the good stuff now <laughs> of actually changing the height of it. And how can we do this in, in a way that actually works, right? So the very first thing we're going to need to do is all the way, well, depends where you want. You don't have to do this on your route necessarily but this is a new thing. I've done a video on it already, uh, but it's called interpolate size, allow keywords. VS code is mad at me because this is new. I will let you know browser support as of the time of recording is not perfect uh, or is far from perfect, I should say, but it is the perfect progressive enhancement because if this doesn't do anything, they're just gonna get this and we won't have the animation. If they're on a newer browser that supports it, I'll put browser support tables uh, link in the description just so you can see what the current support is when you're watching this because it might be fantastic by the time you watch this or you're watching it just as it comes out, in which case it will be okay, but not amazing. Uh, but it's such an amazing progressive enhancement. It makes our lives so much easier. And this is what makes animating to height auto possible. That's all we need to do and it works. And that's because it's an inherited property. So you could put this on your HTML or your body and it's just going to inherit all the way through onto every element and work. So it's really cool. It's like a switch you can turn on and then hide auto animations work. Uh, so that's awesome. The one thing that's a little bit weird here though is on what we need to animate. And for this, we're going to open our dev tools back up. And if I come and take a look at one of these guys and we'll make my, my stuff here bigger, uh, right there. So you can see I have the summary that's right here. And if I look in my summary, I have my marker. That's the thing I styled before and I have that. And then I have the paragraph that's right here. There's actually another thing that's in here because if I open or close this, like my paragraph styling doesn't change, right? The, the paragraph is just there and I just have this open state coming. There's nothing, if you, you could dig through all the CSS here and you're not gonna find anything that's actually related to how this is showing and hiding and it can be really frustrating. So I'd actually had this turned on in my browser settings and completely forgot that this was a thing that wasn't just the default. Uh, and I'll say why I remembered that in just a second. But what you wanna do is come to the settings here and in the settings, you're gonna come and it's in your preferences and you're gonna scroll down a little bit until you get to elements. And in the elements, you have show user agent shadow DOM and you wanna make sure that's on. 
So by default, it'll be off. You might've already turned it on. I don't know, but make sure this is on. And if that is on, when you come take a look now, you're gonna see your details and then you're gonna see the shadow root. And in the shadow root, you see, now we get our detail summary. Uh, it, it's basically like a web component now, right? We have these slots coming in. It has even a style tag in here for some local styling. And there's a bit of other useful information in here. And I just really want to thank uh, Zoran from the channel CSS Weekly. It was from his video uh, where when I was planning this one, I sort of put it together and wanted to see if anybody else had covered it. And I found his video on it where he went into detail on how this works. And I went, oh, I thought that was always on. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank that. His video actually shows some other really cool stuff you can do, um, like animating the arrow here and actually making them like auto collapse and stuff. But he doesn't use the interpolate size. He actually used a different a uh, feature that you have to do like on element by element. Um, so anyway, I'll point to his, the link to his video is in the description if you want to check it out and I'll remind you at the end because um, he looks at some cool things you might want to add to your to your layout. But what's really important with this shadow root here is we have the detail summary, which is the same thing we had before. That's our, our summary right here, right? This, the part at the top. But then there's this other part, which is our details content. And in the details content, you'll notice it says sudo equals details content. That means this is a pseudo element and we can select that pseudo element, even though we never saw it until we turned on this shadow root right here. So I can come here and let's just come details summary. We'll come right here because this is with our details, maybe right here. And I can say details. And with that, I can say details content. And just for fun, let's just give it a background of a red so we can actually see it. And now when I open it up, there's a red background. So that's really awesome. <laughs> and so this is just sort of like this area that's all around it's the part that hides and shows, and this is what we want to be able to select. Now I mentioned here adding the spacing on whatever is here. The reason I said that is because it's very tempting. This is like selecting that content area. It's very tempting to add that here, but if you do that, it's going to add this big empty space on the bottom, uh, even when it's closed. And that's kind of annoying. And it took me a minute to realize what was happening when I did that, since it was closed. <laughs> so uh, yeah, add the spacing you want when the element is opened to the actual elements that are in there. But you can use this for style, like the regular styling of everything. This is the parent for all the things that are inside of there. So you know, this paragraph is technically a child of this details content, even though it's a direct child of the details. Shadow DOM stuff is weird. <laughs> and just really fast, I'm gonna add a couple of styles here just to make it a little bit smaller uh, in size. Maybe we can make that a little bit bigger for, for now. Um, there we go. Uh, just to sort of separate the hierarchy of those two a little bit. And now we come in with the actual magic <laughs> of making this work. So what we're gonna do is come here and I'm gonna say block size. So we had, I was using a oh, padding block. So that was the top and bottom. So block size is our height basically with, it's just the logical property uh, equivalent of height uh, for our intensive purposes here. And I'm gonna say zero and you're gonna see it disappears because there's no height on it. And if we have no height, we won't see it. So when I'm toggling it open and closed, uh, actually I do have, if we come here, I do have an overflow hidden too. Um, just because if not, you can see the content will overflow out the bottom. So I make sure that has an overflow hidden on it just on the details there, works perfectly. Uh, I guess you probably could also put that here. I'm not sure, I didn't try that. So I'll let you experiment with that and try if you're coding along. Uh, but yeah, I put my block size zero here. And then what I want is let's copy this selector. We're gonna come here and we're gonna say that my details that is open gets a block size of auto like that. And now when I open it and close it, you can see it, it is once again working. You might be saying, well, Kevin, it's not being animated. That's because we're not telling it to animate. <laughs> we have to tell it to do that. So let's come here and say transition block size and if you're using height you just transition your height instead and i'm going to say one second and make this whatever you need but now like magic it works <laughs> it's a, every time i do this and it works and i'm animating the block size or the height um, i'm just sort of blown away a little bit uh, so you can see there we go isn't that so nice <laughs> it's magic to me uh, but there's a problem when it goes this way it's animating when it goes this way it's not what's going on uh, this is actually happening because of something called content visibility. And so to understand what's happening here, to see that content visibility, we'll open our dev tools back up and I'm going to inspect one of the closed ones. And when we inspect one of the closed ones here, and we go back in the shadow route, we're going to see in here, there is on this slot, this inline style display block content visibility hidden. And so it's an inline style that's being injected by the browser here. So I can't do anything about that. That's just what it is. 
Um, and that's for accessibility purposes and make sure that the content is invisible if it's closed. Um, and if I come in, I look at the open one. In the open one, the content visibility is gone. So actually, let's go look at the closed one again. Sorry. Uh, and we'll look here. And when I open it, you'll see that it changes the style. And when I close it, the content visibility comes back. And so we know when it's closed, the content visibility will be set to none. But that does mean here on my transition, what we can actually do is add in, we'll just put a comma and say content visibility of one second as well. And I wish that on its own would actually be enough to work, but we have to bring in another little bit of modern CSS that has better browser support actually, uh, which is this one right here, which is transition behavior allow discrete. And what this means is um, things like content visibility, things like display, so going from display none to display anything else, all of these other things are considered discrete animations, meaning they don't actually animate, right? If you've ever tried to do it, it just doesn't work. This opens up the door of being able to animate to these things. And so if I hit save on that now, what that means is when I close, it actually works. And when I open, it works. Uh, instead, because what would traditionally happen if you tried to animate the content visibility is it would just instantly switch. Now it's going to wait until it's closed and then the transition sort of kicks in at the end of it basically is how I understand it. So you can't, you don't get like a smooth transition. It just means your other transitions are all going to work and it's not going to prevent this from getting in the way. So I think it just sort of delays this thing from animating until the end. So now it opens and it closes and it works and it's amazing. And it's just a nice details summary that works now. And we don't have that much CSS to do to actually get it to work because modern CSS is absolutely fantastic. Now, as I mentioned, Zoran from CSS Weekly did a little bit more with his, where as I said, the animation, he has a little animation going on with those, uh, as well as they're automatically like opening and closing the other one without any JavaScript on there. So he did use a calc size for the sizing of things. So another cool thing that you could actually learn about along the way there. And there was a few little bonus tips along the way with how he did things. And Zoran did tell me that in his video, he used calc size with only one keyword, but they've updated the syntax to require two words. So just if you do watch that video, just keep that in mind as you're going through it. I'd strongly recommend going and just checking out the channel in general, because if you like CSS tips, it's another fantastic place to get them. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons and all of my channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.